Hello, this is Danny Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide. This is the second video of the series of problems that we'll be facing with the combining of persistent entity streaming with small shard player counts. Once the shard player counts get larger, most of these problems will diminish but not disappear. But for shard player counts to increase, CIG will have to make dynamic server meshing and to get really high capacity out of the replication layer. Neither will be the case in 4.0 and is likely going to take quite a while, potentially years, for either of them to happen. In my prior video, I talked about Vegas shard problems. From the old slogan of that what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. The same way, most of what we are going to regard as persistent entity streaming will happen in and only in the one shard it happened in not everywhere and not moving with us from shard to shard because otherwise to players in the shard it will just look like a complete buggy mess in the second video here i am going to talk about seattle shard problems why do i call them seattle shard problems well in 1971 seattle's economy wasn't as diversified as it is now and a downturn in boeing's business led to major layoffs and a complete dread over the city's future and for two weeks in April of 1971, two enterprising real estate agents tried to get attention to the fact that there were deals to be made in the declining market by putting up a billboard on the road to SeaTac Airport saying, Will the last person leaving Seattle turn out the lights? Is a phrase that has been repeated countless times whenever somebody wants to complain about real or imagined decline. Now, when shards are small, measured in the hundreds of players, there will become times when either because it's not prime hour in that time zone, or there is less reason for people to be playing that week because saying event finished. Now, in a standard MMO, there is no problem with merging low player population shards because there isn't anything different between them. But add persistence to the mix and suddenly there are countless differences between the shards, many of them perhaps mutually exclusive. But with all those bespoke changes in a shard, do you just keep going with all the resources to keep a shard operating for just one player? At the recent Bar Citizen World Tour event in Los Angeles, Chris Roberts was talking to a group that I was in about how with persistent entity streaming, players would undoubtedly do fun things like create water bottle stacks. So I specifically asked Chris if CIG would keep a whole shard active so that just two players could admire their water bottle stack. And Chris said that yes, they would. Although, to make it economical, the mesh would have to become dynamic. So yes, it is entirely likely that we will get lonely Seattle shards, just like we currently occasionally get servers with just a couple players. And then what happens when the last person does leave the Seattle shard? Do you turn out the lights? Do you back up the entire server's database in case one of them returns? Do you really initialize and restore from backup that whole shard if just one player returns? If you don't, that one player, correctly, will say that persistence is broken. So how many of these whole shard backups of unoccupied shards will they keep? For how long? And just like the Vegas shard issues, this will diminish when shards get really big. A shard with a maximum of tens of thousands of players isn't going to have a dip that will take it down to zero or anywhere close to zero. And it doesn't have to be near the top of its capacity in order to make it economical. But then we have the not quite opposite end of the spectrum. Even a shard with a 10,000 player cap will under some circumstances reach 10,001. And then, well, you could put in a wait list for a while, but eventually there comes the need to start a new shard. So the server farm will initialize an entirely new set of services for the replication layer, initial game servers, and copy the entire NDGraph database from the global copy to the shard level NDGraph database. And that's quite a lot of work, enough to sing a little song to pass the time. Baby shard do 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 baby shard do 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 baby shard do 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 baby shard. Now, the thing is, immediately, the baby shard is also a Seattle shard because it was started to be populated by just the handful of players on the waiting list. Now, you might think that instead they should split an existing shard instead of creating a new one. But hmm, let me think. Half of everybody disappears from the world all at once. Yeah, that would be just so, so, so popular when it happened. Not to mention all the persistent items would have to go or not. So despite the mathematical benefit of splitting the shard, player satisfaction will be for creating the baby shard. So to summarize, the Vegas shard problems have to do with the actions on one shard, staying on that one shard in order to not simply be becoming random noise perceived as bugs on all the other shards. 
and that thus the promise of persistent ND streaming will only apply when returning to the same shard. The Seattle shard problem shows that in order to keep all that promised persistence on a shard, CIG may well have to be cornered into preserving shards with the user count has diminished to a few, or even for a time, none. Now, as I said, my philosophy on this channel, I'm going to only talk about what can be done better, and unfortunately, there is no solution to these problems. They will be mitigated by having the shard player count increase with further refinement to the server meshing and replication layer. But in the meantime, they can also be made less problematic to the players by how CIG works, a part of the server meshing umbrella of technologies that has so far gotten little attention, and that is the matchmaking system. And that will be the subject of my next and final video in this series. And now for an update on my dual Grow the Channel giveaways. First, we have the short-term giveaway of the Bar Citizen World Tour Participation Card, autographed by Chris and Sandy Roberts, that is running just for videos between June 15th and July 31st. And then we have the Big Ship giveaway. As of recording, we are at 75% of the subscriber goal and 73% of the membership goal. To give away to some lucky player their choice of the Anvil Liberator, the ship shipping ship for shipping your ships, or the Misk Oz, the long length look ahead launcher lorry. One entry per video, subscribers, you're entered automatically, and if the winner is a subscriber, as of the publication date of the winning video and at the drawing time, they will win both the Liberator and the Odyssey. For non-members, just subscribe and comment with the secret word. And the secret word for this video is what the last person leaving should do. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide.